All right, welcome back, Anatomy. Uh, today we're just going to do an overview of the parts of the brain and uh, and its function. So we're going to want to know what these little wiggly things are and what's this covering here and and what's different between this and this over here. So we want to talk about the pieces and parts of the brain and what those pieces and parts do. And uh, you can use other resources. You're going to get some more detailed information than what I'm going to give you, but this is the extent that I'll test you. So, um, so let's just get started. First of all, when I look at this brain, I notice two different colors. So there's gray matter and there's white matter. So the gray matter is on the outside. The white matter is on the inside. I think the outside gets dirty. That's a mnemonic for me, and that helps me to remember the inside is white because it stays clean. Um, what makes it white? The fact that these this section is made up of axons, and we know axons are covered with the myelin sheath. Remember, the myelin sheath is that fatty tissue. So fat typically appears white in tissues. So we know that this must be some sort of fatty tissue, and when we think about the types of cells, we know it would make sense that that would be myelin. So this is more of the directing traffic portion of the brain. And then out here, this is where we're going to find our cell bodies and our dendrites. And so cell bodies, that's the metabolic center of the cell. So that's where the actual work is getting done inside of the brain. Notice that's just the very outer layer. That outer layer is called the cortex. So the cortex is where action happens. Um, you have grooves and you have ridges, and those grooves and ridges are called sulci, for plural, or sulcus, and uh, gyrus. So the grooves, see these indentations here, those are sulci, or sulcus. Um, and then the ridges, the bumps, are the gyri, plural, or gyrus, singular. So the purpose of any fold, whether it's in your intestine, your stomach, your brain, um, it's to increase the surface area of a, of a tissue. So if the activity is happening on the surface, surface, we want to make more surface in that one area. So if this was a flat brain, I could only fit in this much tissue, but by folding it up, look, I can like maybe triple the amount that I put in my example. So, um, so the whole purpose of any folding is to increase surface area. Um, between lobes of brains, you might find even deeper cuts, deeper than the sulcus, and those deeper cuts will be called fissures. Uh, the outside of the brain is the cor cortex. Um, the majority of the brain is called the cerebrum. So when we look at this whole brain here, what we're seeing is the cerebrum. All of that is cerebral. So this is the largest portion of your brain. It's about 85%. It's split into two hemispheres. That seemed to be common knowledge in my class, the right and left hemisphere. And we made um, connections that the right side controls left and left controls right parts of the body. Um, and we talked about how the left side is more analytical and the right side is more creative. And um, so those are some connections we made in, in our prior knowledge. Um, the corpus callosum will connect the right and the left together so that they can communicate. So we want to try to, um, when we learn new information, we want to try to access parts of our left analytical thought and parts of our right creative thought. So the more connections we can make in the brain, the better. Um, and then the corpus callosum allows those to communicate. So over 50 million uh, cells making up that corpus callosum. So this outer portion of our brain, this is our consciousness. So conscious thought and act comes from this part of our brain. Um, being able to create words, both storing the words, storing a picture of what those words look like, sending information to our mouth to make those words. All of that is cerebral. Um, logical responses, so when you're taking your test, you're using your frontal lobe um, of your cerebrum. Our emotions come from our cerebrum. Is it good? Is it bad? Consciousness, interpretation of sensation. It was hot. It was cold. It was light. It was ticklish. Um, and voluntary movement. So clapping my hands. I did because of my cerebral thought. So our cerebrum is divided into lobes. And you'll remember that the skull bones we named during the skeletal system, the skull bones overlying the lobe gives the name to the lobe. So your frontal lobe 
is protected by the frontal bone and the temporal by the temporal and parietal and occipital. So we learned those a long time ago. Those are going to be easy as cake. Now we just have to identify what they do. So um, the occipital lobe, let's start here in the blue. The occipital lobe is for vision. So when I look at something, that information is going in my eyes. And let's just take it back straight back to the back of my brain. And I'm looking at the cupboards in my classroom, and my occipital lobe is going to tell me what it is I'm looking at and what that looks like. The temporal lobe here looks like an earmuff to me. Um, that's going to be hearing and smelling. So I think my ear is right there in the temporal lobe, so doesn't that make sense that that's where auditory, that would be sound, um, auditory information is processed. Olfaction is smelling. So olfaction, again, if I were to trace that right back, I would get to my temporal lobe. So my senses, over 100 million senses, I can figure it out, um, is interpreted in my temporal lobe. My parietal lobe is more of a sensory cortex. So here, this ridge right here, it's called the postcentral gyrus. The postcentral gyrus is your sensory cortex. So this is where you can recognize a touch, pain, coldness. Um, here in front, this is now my frontal lobe, and this is the precentral gyrus. The precentral gyrus is my motor cortex. My motor cortex controls my body parts, skeletal muscles. So that's where I'm telling my body what to do. And then um, the rest of my frontal lobe is used for different thinking pieces. The, the very front is going to be associated with your higher level thinking, critical thinking, reasoning, choosing the right answers on a test. Um, I mentioned the pre and the post central gyrus. This ridge right here, this is the central sulcus. So the central sulcus divides the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. Looking at the inside of the brain now, I've cut the brain in half, the two hemispheres, I've separated them. Um, and what I have inside is what's called the diencephalon. So the diencephalon, um, you can see the purple here, this is your cortex, um, <clears throat> the cerebrum. And then I'm really talking in here. And there's really just three pieces I want you to know about the diencephalon. You have the epithalamus, the hypothalamus, and the thalamus. So remember your prefixes, hypo is above or below, hypo is below, sorry, epi is above or upon. So, hype, so thalamus is going to be your central piece, kind of this central region here with the circle. And then above that, you have this brownish ridge here, that's the epithalamus. And then you have this little stalk in front, and that's called the hypothalamus. So... Your point of reference is the thalamus. Above it is epithalamus. In here you have what's called the choroid plexus. You can't see it really well, but this white portion here is choroid plexus full of capillaries. Those capillaries are going to make cerebral spinal fluid. And we've talked about cerebral spinal fluid already. Um, in front here, this hypothalamus, so now below my reference point, hypo below. This is where, this is like your drives. So it's regulating temperature, water balance, um, it tells me if I'm hungry, it tells me if I'm thirsty, my limbic system is there, that's like the portion that's going to drive my emotions. Um, <clears throat> like if I, if I react out of emotional response versus if I'm acting out of reasonable response, up here. So um, all of that is in the hypothalamus. And then the thalamus is a sensory relay system, if you will. There's tracks going up. And tracks going down, right? So remember, we're going to go up the posterior through the thalamus, over the postcentral gyrus, down over the central sulcus, down the front side in the precentral gyrus, again, go through that thalamus, and then down the anterior portion. So the thalamus is going to kind of put an, a, an emotion, I guess, on your sensory um, input, and it's going to decide if you like it or not. So then it's going to direct it to the proper location on your parietal lobe. The brain stem, so you had your cerebrum, and here is what we were just talking about with the diencephalon. So then below that, connected to the spinal cord, is your brain stem. So you have three 
parts, the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla. So this portion that's way up inside is the midbrain, and then you'll have two bumps, a pons, and then another bump, the medulla. So the midbrain contains reflex centers for vision and hearing. So like if your, your lens has to curve and flatten out to accommodate for distance it's looking at, same thing with your pupils. Um, so it's going to be responsible for those sorts of, of reflexes, um, also reflexes with, with hearing. And then the pons, this middle portion, again, kind of like the thalamus. It's just fiber tracks that are going up and down through the brain and really just directing traffic, but also has some involvement with breathing control. The majority of your breathing control is response is, uh, is the job of the medulla oblongata. So the medulla oblongata, I think of this as all the vital signs that the doctor takes at the at the office or in the hospital. So they're, they're looking at my heart rate, my blood pressure, my breathing rate, all of those things are the job of the medulla. Also swallowing and vomiting is controlled, like those reflexes are controlled at the level of the brainstem and more specifically the medulla. And then the last piece that we have to talk about, so we did the cerebrum, kind of the outside, the diencephalon on the inside, the connecting piece, the brainstem, and now the cerebellum. This is technically the second largest portion of the brain, and it's often described as looking like a cauliflower. It's also made of gray and white matter, which you'll see when we do the dissection. And, and this is in, involved with your balance, coordination, and equilibrium. So we say that it's involved in skeletal muscle activity, but I don't mean like it's telling my arm to move right now, but it's telling these two arms to move coordinatedly. I don't know if that's a word, but... Um, it's, it's getting body parts to move in sync with each other in proper timing. So I played the flute when I was in high school. And these fingers, they have to move at just the right time to get a specific note. So it would be the job of my cerebellum to get these down all at the same time. Otherwise, I would get doo -doo 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 -doo, four different notes instead of one. Um, as a high jumper, as a basketball player, as a ballerina, as a long jumper, as any sport, um, you're trying to do a number of things at once and it's very well coordinated and the timing has to be very specific. That's the job of the cerebellum. As well as when I say uh, equilibrium, am I standing up? Am I on my left side? Am I on my right side? Am I upside down? Am I moving forward? Am I moving backwards? Am I going fast or slow? That's all interpreted at this little color flower cerebellum um, of the base of our brain. Okay, so that's all the pieces and parts I care about for my test. Um, so let's grow some dendrites, close those synapses, make pathways to file folders that help us remember that information. Thanks for listening.